we're going to learn to make socks on nine inch circulars using these little short nine inch circular needles to fly through the foot and the cuff of the sock. This pattern is sized for women, any shoe size, um, average shoe width, and it, it is available for both DK weight and fingering weight. And normally when I put out a sock pattern, I put it in one weight and then I say, you know, you, now that you have the skills you need, you can move on to all kinds of patterns that use these techniques. But this pattern is pretty unique in the way that it's written, especially for nine inch circulars, so I thought I'd offer it in both weights. If you would like to get your copy of this pattern to follow along, I'll give you a link here. Just click the little I in the upper right hand corner and you'll see a link there to my website. And on my website you will see all of the materials you need for either weight of sock and you'll be able to get your pattern. You'll also see links and information on everything that you see in the video, all the needles that I use and the yarns and everything else. I'm going to put this pattern at about um, somewhere between advanced beginner and intermediate. If you've never knit socks before, this isn't a bad way to start. It's not really that difficult. It's um, kind of a pretty easy first sock pattern, but I will encourage you to practice with nine inch circulars a little bit. They do take, I would say, at least, at least a few hours, um, a few inches of knitting to really start to feel comfortable with it where your, um, your gauge is really even and it looks really good. Anyway, these socks are toe up using German short rows. I think everyone who's tried German short rows uh, has decided that it's their favorite way of knitting socks, so I wanted to be sure to include that. And they are knit with an afterthought heel, which makes them, you know, you pretty much just knit a tube and then we'll go back and knit the, um, the heel last. Anyway, I think we are ready to get started. We're gonna start with the toe of the sock, and I happen to use a different color of yarn, which is kind of a fun thing. Um, but you will need double pointed needles to knit both the toe and the heel. We're gonna start with a provisional cast on, and that's coming right up. Okay, so we're ready to get started with the tutorial. If you'd like to get your copy of the pattern to follow along, remember you can always click the little I in the upper right hand corner and you'll see a link there to my website. Um, let's go ahead and get started by seeing the socks close up. These are the DK weight socks. And I've kind of fallen in love with DK weight socks because they're pretty quick to knit. They wear as nicely as fingering weight. Um, and also I, I like the yarn choices that I have. You'll see here that um, you'll see here that I've knit the toe and the heel in a different color. It's totally not necessary. I just thought it was cute. Um, so that's DK weight, and then we have the fingering weight here. They're kind of lumpy and wrinkly because they've been shoved in a bag. I also haven't blocked them yet, but. Um, much smaller stitches. These take a while longer to knit, but they're a finer fabric and nice to wear. And we are going to start with a provisional cast on toe. And for this, we're going to want to use double pointed needles. And um, I am going to use much bulkier yarn and much thicker needles to do this, um, as I usually do in my tutorials. So you can see what I'm, more easily see what I'm doing. I'm using bulky yarn and uh, I think size 10 needles. And we are going to um, do a crochet chain right onto the knitting needle to get started. The first thing I want to do is I want to take a color of yarn that is not the color I'm using for the toe of the sock. I'm going to tie a knot in the yarn, and then I'm going to make a slip knot, and I'll take my crochet hook and just chain a few stitches. Now I released a video recently, a short technique video showing how to do this. So you, this is a way of doing a provisional cast on, a crocheted provisional cast on without having to pick up stitches from the spine of the crochet chain. So I have my crochet hook in my dominant hand. I'm going to uh, put the knitting needle over the working yarn like this and then reach over the needle, grab the yarn and pull it through. And you've just cast on one stitch. Pull the yarn back. Pull the yarn back. And I always find my tensions a little bit looser than it would be if I picked up the stitches. But since I'll be ripping this out and throwing this yarn away, it's, it's just waste yarn. It doesn't matter. And the next row of knitting turns out to be fine. The tension's fine. And I'm just going to do an abbreviated sample here. You will, of course, follow the directions in the pattern for the number that you are casting on. Okay. 
Um, no, I think I'll actually stop there. Okay. And then, whoops, I am losing stitches. I wanted to have 12 for this example. Then just chain a few other, few more stitches, and you can break this yarn. I'm sorry, I didn't have, have my scissors out. I don't seem to have any scissors. Okay, and then just pull the last loop. I see the scissors now. Pull the last loop through there, and don't tighten it too much because we're going to undo this pretty soon. And then using the yarn that you actually want to use for the toe of the sock, we are going to start at the slip knot end, and remember you tied a knot in the yarn, and just knit across these stitches. You take your working yarn, fold it over and wrap the back needle and pull it through, and we've attached a new yarn and you can just knit across. Now this first row that we're knitting actually catches us up to where we would be in the pattern if we picked up stitches from the crochet chain. Does that make sense? When, once I finish this row, there's no difference in what I've done here or picking up stitches from the crochet chain. And then we're going to purl back across these stitches before we get started on the German short rows. Okay. Now if you've worked the German short row technique in uh, my sock patterns before, this is no different. I'm going to show you how to do it on just a few right side and wrong side rows. Um, of course the instructions are written out row by row and the technique is written out in really clear instructions in the pattern. I am just going to demonstrate the techniques here so you can see how it's done. And the first thing I did was I knit across all the stitches to the last stitch. I'm going to do a German short row technique on this last stitch. So I turn the work, slip that stitch from the left needle to the right, and this is the way you work the German short row technique when the wrong side of the work is facing you. Then pull up on that stitch so you get kind of a funny double stitch. Pull the yarn forward between the two needles to purl across. You're going to purl up to the last stitch and we're going to work the German short row technique on this side. So turn the work and this is the way you're going to work it when the right side of the work is facing you. Slip that stitch from the left needle to the right. Take your working yarn and pull up and you'll get a funny double stitch but it'll look different than the funny double stitch that we did on the other side. And you keep your working yarn in back and knit across to the second to last stitch. Okay, now we're going to do a short row turn on this, so I knit it, I turn the work, slip that stitch from the left needle to the right, pull up on the working yarn to get the funny double stitch, and pull the yarn forward between the two needles so that we can purl. Okay, I knit up to the second to last stitch, turn the work, pull the yarn forward between the two needles, slip that stitch from the left needle to the right, pull up on the working yarn, and then knit to the third to the last stitch. I'm just going to show you this one more time before we start working the second half of the toe. One more time on each side. Turn the work slip the stitch, pull up, pull the yarn forward to purl. Turn 
return to work. Okay, actually, <clears throat> I'm done working the first half of the toe here, or my abbreviated bulky version of it. If you take a look, we definitely have some shaping going on. The work is narrower on the two sides and uh, longer in the middle, wider in the middle. So now I've knit up um, to the first funny double stitch. I'm going to knit the two halves of the funny double stitch together and the next one and turn the work and we're going to work a normal German short row technique here. Slip the stitch, pull up on it. Everything looks a little bit different because the stitch below had a, a German short row turn on it. And purl across. Oops. And then when we get to the first funny double stitch, I'm going to purl those two together and the next stitch, the next double stitch, turn the work, slip that stitch, pull up on it, and knit across. It's funny, for a tutorial on socks on nine inch circulars, the longest part of this video is going to be on double pointed needles because the, <laughs> the most complicated shaped part. Now the first double stitch is two from the end, and I'm going to knit those two together, the two halves of the funny double stitch, and the next one. I want to make it all the way through this abbreviated toe so I can show you how to remove the provisional cast on and switch to the nine inch circulars. Now I'm going to knit up to the last double stitch on the right side. And it's the last one. I'm going to knit those two together. There's no further to go, so I'm just going to turn the work, slip that stitch, and purl across. And again, this is all written out row by row in the pattern. And the last double purl stitch, just purl together. Okay, here we are with our little abbreviated bulky German short row toe. It looks like, it looks like the toe of a sock not ideal, but it, I mean, it is just a, junk, a chunky sample of a sock for sure. And what we're going to do now is take out the provisional cast on um, and start putting these stitches onto the nine inch circular needles. So if you put the work in front of you with the cast on facing you, you should have the slip knot side over here on the left and the non-slip knot side over here on the right. And I get a lot of emails from people who, who panic and they say, oh, it's on, I don't have the same as you, mine are switched around. Just work a row on this needle to get yourself in the right position. There's, it won't make a difference in the, the, final, um, in the final sock. So we just ended this by pulling the, the, the yarn through the last loop. I'm going to Tease that back out and start to unravel to rip out the, unzip the provisional cast on. And if you've done um, a provisional cast on before, the first stitch is always wonky. The yarn actually runs through it. So I'll put my needle in there. I'm using the circular needles now and get that yarn out of the stitch. Okay, from here on out, it's easier. When you're looking at this, follow the V's up. 
and you'll see that there is the, the top V, and it's connected to the scrap yarn that we used. You want to pick up the right leg. You want to go behind the right leg of the top V in the, in the sock yarn that we're using. So there's my first one. Second one. And I like to pick up a whole bunch at once. And then once you get them on the needle, you can pull on the crochet chain. And you'll see, because we did the crochet chain this way, nothing snags because we didn't split any stitches. And you can do that when you're picking up stitches from the spine of the crochet, crochet chain. Okay. Now I have half of my, let me get this yarn out of the way. I have half of my stitches on the nine inch circular and half of them on the double pointed needle. This is a good time to tie the working yarn to the tail. It keeps there from being a gap there. And now we're going to, um, actually I don't have a marker out. I want to place a marker here, uh, a little round stitch marker. I can quickly get one here. I don't want to forget to do that. Okay. I'm going to put a marker there so I know where the beginning of my round is and knit across from the double pointed needle to the nine inch circulars. Okay, you are done with double pointed needles for a while and you'll want to follow the pattern, but if you want to change colors, you can do that. Um, you'll want to do it at the beginning of the round, knit up to the next marker. The nine inch circulars that I'm using here are of course much bigger than the nine inch circulars that you'll use for the actual socks. This is for the DK weight. Um, as much as I ha am enjoying using 9-inch circulars, I will tell you they get more difficult to use with chunkier yarn in bigger needle sizes. <laughs> but I want to use um, chunkier yarn and bigger needles for the demonstration. Okay, everything's ready for you to start flying around on these circulars. And of course you'll want to reference the pattern and tell you exactly when to change color, how long to make the foot, and um, when to start the heel, and that's what we're going to cover next is setting the heel. You follow the pattern around and around on the nine inch circulars to get the sock as long as you need it for your shoe size, and the pattern tells you exactly how far that is and references the different shoe sizes and the number of inches that you need of length. And you'll get to a part where we want to set the heel, and we're really just going to um, kind of mark the heel with a line of stitches that we can remove later, so, and then the last thing we'll do is to go back and knit the heel, kind of add it to the finished sock. Um, and then a couple other things, but let's go ahead and get started with setting the heel. Here is the chunky example. I've knit the sock as long as I need it for my shoe size and I'm ready to set the heel here in the work. I say set the heel, I don't, um, I couldn't think of another word for it. Um, what I want to do is to take another color of yarn that is not my sock yarn color and I'm also going to take a double pointed needle. I found it was easier to do this with a different needle. I'm going to knit across the number of stitches indicated in the pattern for the weight of sock that I'm knitting. We're ignoring the working yarn and just using this scrap yarn to knit across. Mm 
Okay, I knit across those stitches. Now I found my scissors. Break that yarn and I want to slip these stitches back onto the circular. And because I'm right-handed, I like to do it from, from this side. I like to slip two stitches in my right hand. So I only needed the double-pointed needle for a quick minute there. I'll take care of that in a minute. Just slip these. Okay. There's something that I neglected to do. I want the scrap yarn to hang down here in front, both sides. There we go. And now I'm just going to knit across those stitches like nothing, I didn't do anything different. And you'll be able to tell these chunky nine inch circulars are not the easiest thing to work with. It's a lot easier on the smaller size, like I said before. Um, you'll be able to tell where your line of heel stitches are because you'll have the two ends hanging in front and this different color there. Now you'll um, set the heel and then go on to knit the cuff for, um, you can knit the cuff for as long as you can. I usually leave about five grams of yarn to work the sock cuff and to have enough for the bind off. I, that's one of the great things about toe up socks is that you can use all your yarn, so I always like to use it all up. Um, and you'll work the ribbing, and then I wanna show you how to work this bind off because it's kind of a modification to the super stretchy bind off that I am using for socks all the time now. I guess I've known about this technique for about a year. I love it. And we have one by one rib going here. So I'm going to knit the first stitch then purl the next stitch, and then I'm going to put my needle into the back of those two, my left needle into the back of those two stitches I just worked, wrap the needle and pull it through. And then knit the next stitch. And because the last stitch was a knit, I'm gonna put my needle into the front of those two stitches, wrap the back needle and pull it through. So this is what the pattern looks like. I'm going to knit the knits and purl the purls. And if the stitch I just knit was a knit, I'm going to knit the two stitches together. And if the stitch I just worked was a purl, I'm gonna purl the two stitches together. And this is what makes a really stretchy bind off that looks really good too. So I'm gonna yarn forward and purl, and then put the needle into the back of those two stitches, wrap the needle and pull it through knit, put the needle into the front of those two stitches, purl, back, knit, front. You see here you end up with a nice looking um, bind off that has a lot of give to it. It's going to fit nicely around the calf. Um, especially if you're using all of your yarn and the sock's going to have to be stretchy enough to fit up higher on the calf, you want to make sure you have a good stretchy bind off. Now when you're finished with the bind off, I'm going to pull in another example here. We're going to use this example in the next section. Um, when you're finished with the bind off, you will have kind of a stair-steppy jog. You see that? where the last stitch and the first stitch don't really match up. And that's because knitting in the round is essentially knitting in a spiral. So I'm gonna show you how to weave in the end to fix that up. You take your tapestry needle and the end of the yarn and put, put the needle through both legs of the V of the first stitch that you see here and then put it down back into the same hole you came out of. And look at that. Well, I can straighten it out a little better than that. That looks really good. If it didn't look quite right, I'd pull it out and try again. But then you can just weave in the ends from here and you are done with the cuff of the sock. And that, by, that um, little technique you can use anytime you're t trying to tidy up. Uh, bind off stitches in the round like that. 
Okay, next up we're going to work the heel and graph the heel together and a few last little bits. Okay, we are finished with the sock and we're ready to go back and put a heel in it. You could at this point, I suppose, leave it a tube sock, but we are going to put a heel in these socks. I'm going to show you how to do it just in case. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here is where we left the sock last time. I'm going to go ahead and pull these needles out and I don't panic. It's okay. I just don't want them flopping around while we're working on the actual heel stitches. So the best way to do this is to take needles that are smaller than the needles that you used in the sock. It's just easier that way. And we're going to take out this row of stitches and this really isn't that hard, but I know it makes people panic when there are live stitches hanging around with, um, with no one retrieving them, saving them. But so sit yourself in a place where you have good light and where you have a, a time when you have a few minutes to take care of this where you don't have to leave it in the middle and come back to it. Because it is a good idea to get stitches picked up quickly if you're leaving them live. So we see this first V here. The first V is different, as they always are, and the yarn actually starts with the left leg of this V. <coughs> Excuse me. So start that and pull that out and then pull out the right leg of the V. And then from here on out it's going to go right left, right left. And I always like to keep this yarn um, pretty short it's, so I'm not pulling through a bunch of waste yarn. Okay, this is the part where people really start to panic, but I swear there's nothing to worry about, it's fine. You have your smaller needle, um, you, you want to pick these stitches up, and to get them mounted correctly on the needle, we want to pick them up from the back to the front, all the way across. And of course this looks really easy because I'm using such chunky yarn, but this really isn't hard even in a small gauge. It's surprisingly more easy Surprising more is easier than you think it would be. So I have all the bottom stitches and I'm going to turn this the other way because I like to work across from the right to the left. And when you're finished, you will have, you'll have all of the um, stitches on the toe side on one needle and the stitches on the cuff side on two needles. And you'll have one more stitch on the bottom needle. There's one stitch fewer up here on these and that's totally normal. That's the way it's supposed to be. Now you're going to follow your pattern because um, and, and start knitting across these stitches and working the short row heel. And the crazy thing is, and you know this already if you've knit German short row socks before, the heel and the toe are worked exactly the same. So the pattern spells it out row by row, but you're going to knit across all these stitches and work the whole toe, where you're starting the German short rows and then picking them back up, you know, knitting through the double stitches. And then when you're finished, you'll end up with something that looks like this. Oh, I kind of forgot to tell you. We've picked everything up on these smaller needles, but you actually want to switch over to the larger needles when you start working, um, start working these stitches to work the heel. The smaller needles were just for picking them up. So this is what we have here now. The toe, or the heel, it's, <laughs> it looks just like the toe. The heel is finished. I have um, let, cut the yarn, the working yarn, leaving a bit of a tail because I'm going to Kitchener stitch these um, stitches together and I'll show you how that looks. I need a tapestry needle for this. Kitchener stitch is a way of grafting the stitches together without leaving any ridge or anything. 
I'm going to transfer these to one needle. You make it easier to see what I'm doing. If no one was watching me, I wouldn't transfer it to one needle, but I'd make it easier. So my working yarn is here. I line up the stitches on the front and the back needle, and now I'm going to graph these together. I have a couple of setup stitches here. I'm going to go through the stitch on the front needle as if to purl, and go through the stitch on the back needle as if to knit. Those are my little setup stitches. Now to go through the, the steps of Kitchener stitch, it, it goes front needle, front needle, back needle, back needle. So knit, off, purl, purl, off, knit. And you give it a good tuck. Let me start over. Knit, off, purl, purl, off, knit. And then give it a good tug. And this is truly the little chant that I say while I'm doing Kitchener Stitch. Okay, I'm not going to go all the way across, but you will definitely want to follow the pattern because there's a little com accommodation made at the end of this process um, because there is one stitch fewer on the top needle than the bottom. I'm just going to pull that out. And when you work across, you can really tighten this up. You can see you can scrunch it up and then smooth it out. That's usually what I do to make sure that it's all even and smooth. Now, the last thing I want to address here is that you will have this worked all the way across. I only need part of it done so I can show you this. You will have a significant gap here. And we are going to use the tail end, the end that we use to start knitting the heel, to close this up. And there are a couple of ways that you can do it. I tried out a couple of different ways. And I, I was happy with both of them, but I'll, um, I'll show you. You can, if you like using the mattress stitch, you can mattress stitch these two sides together by going by picking up the ladders between two stitches over here and picking up the ladders between two stitches over here and just going back and forth. I found that I like to do kind of a bicycle spoke um, design instead. And so instead of just closing it up, it kind of makes it decorative. And I'm not sure I'm going to have the greatest results with this bulky yarn, but we'll give it a try. I'm going to go into the center of the heel stitches here to get myself started. And then I'm going to just go between stitches and back down into the same place. This is, I think we're going to have a tough time with this bulky yarn making it look really good. But I definitely want to show you the technique. And then a little bit of space and go between two stitches and back down to the same spot. Tighten this up, and then again. Actually, this is not looking the way I want it to look. Let me try this one more time. Okay, there's my starting spot. It's really actually pretty easy with the lighter weight yarn. And it makes a bicycle spoke design. Oh, that's looking better. Not quite. You get the idea, I hope. I'm going to show you on the finished socks, <coughs> excuse me, what it looks like. Um, just because the yarn is big and bulky, we have a gap there. But you see kind of it makes this decorative design, decorative design, makes this decorative pattern here. Let me grab, uh, oh, here we go. Here's the little bicycle spoke design on this side. Let me see. I was kind of inventing the technique and working on the sock at the same time. 
you see that looks nice and there's absolutely no gap there and in the DK weight version see how cute that looks it looks like a little flower and that will be the last step that you have to do to finish up your socks once the gap is closed up and well the sock was bound off a while ago once the kitchener stitch is worked and the gaps are closed up you are finished and ready to move on to the next pair anyway i hope you enjoy this tutorial i can't wait to see the colors and yarns that you guys use i always check ravelry to see the projects you post them there i will definitely see them good luck